Today, I hope to offer a little practical advice on uh, eyepieces. Not as much theory if you work through part one, uh, where we went over how all of the different eyepieces are constructed, everything from the Ramsden to the, to the Nagler and uh, everything in between. You know that the uh, construction of eyepieces for telescopes is a very involved and somewhat costly process. What I'm showing you here is are some lenses, some of whom are a little more expensive. The this uh, Mead 20 millimeter ultra wide angle that you see here is probably the most expensive eyepiece that I have. And I think I would say that for a frugal astronomer, it's a little bit of overkill. There are occasions where uh, I use that one effectively, but the truth is I tend to think that any eyepiece that costs over $100 is probably not worth it until you get into some very uh, nice telescope equipment. So, <clears throat> what do you see here? Well, the, the Mead uh, 20 millimeter is uh, really nice for deep sky objects, but frankly for anything else it's really overkill and even then the uh, telescopes I use it in, uh, even the Mead LX10 that I showed you in, uh, earlier in the series, with its uh, optics which are superior, and by the way at some point I will compare the telescopes and give you a little bit of a review of some of them. But the one thing that I would suggest is rather than spending your money on the expensive eyepieces, early on I would convert to two inch eyepieces. Now let me explain the difference. A two inch eyepiece has a, uh, a barrel like this. Let me put my hand in there so you can get an idea of the approximate size of a two inch. Of course it, it is two inches. That's the size of the barrel here. Now this particular set is one that Celestron sells. I think it's a good value. and uh, But it depends to some extent on what you want to look at. The truth is if you're going to be looking at planets this is not probably the the optimum in terms of value IP set. This is really more for people that want to look at the deep sky. Uh, nebula, galaxies, things like that. And by the way there is a an eyepiece that's in this set that is not does not come with the original. This is a is an Orion Q70 32 millimeter and we'll talk about that toward the end. But uh, so that the hole there is one I cut just to hold that extra two inch eyepiece. So why two inch? Well the reason is that quite frankly the images are brighter, you get a, a better field of view, and especially if you're going to look at what are called deep sky objects, in other words everything outside the solar system, then I think a nice two inch set is important. Now it comes with a Barlow, and, and I'm not trying to review this particular set here, except to say that compared to the, the small set they sell, the inch and a quarter, I think this is a superior uh, set. This is a 2x Barlow lens and what it does is multiplies the effective uh, focal length of the three eyepieces that come with this set. Let me move this Orion out for now so I won't be confused. The set basically consists of a Barlow, three two inch eyepieces, a set of two inch filters, and an adapter in case you are using these on a refractor instead of a Smit Cassegrain. So, uh, and it also comes with a diagonal. Let me show you the diagonal 
it's over here on the on the mead it's right there on the mead LX10 and you notice uh, by the way while I'm at it should mention be sure you have uh, enough eyepiece covers both the uh, the kind that insert like this and the kind that cover like here's a bag of them if you see that top one there that slides over an inch and a quarter eyepiece now I have extras especially for the inch and a quarters because they seem to get lost more than the others but uh, I've gotten a little off off topic this is the diagonal that comes with the two inch eyepiece set it attaches to the back of a Smith Cassegrain and it doesn't matter whether it's the Mead or the Celestron this is the inch and a quarter visual back and the inch and a quarter diagonal so uh, let's take a look now at some inch and a quarter eyepieces and then we'll kind of uh, give you uh, I give you my thoughts on eyepieces and what, what I would buy if I were starting over these are the inch and a quarter eyepieces that I have now some of these came with telescopes I bought uh, especially some of these like the the MA9 and the MA25 this is a 25 millimeter modified acromat or mead acromat depending on what you want to call it and this is a 9 millimeter the uh, you can spend a lot of money or, or very little money for eyepieces let me tell you what I have found to be useful one is if you regardless of whether you go with inch and a quarter or or with two inch you should have uh, if you're going to be doing any deep sky observing in other words anything outside the solar system you need to have a a fairly long focal length eyepiece this is a 40 millimeter I showed you earlier the two inch Orion 32 millimeter something in that size will give you will allow you to see the full extent of things like the Orion Nebula anything shorter than about 32 millimeters on most modern 8 inch Smith Cassegrains and that's mostly what I'm going to be talking about it will not show you the full extent in other words they'll give you a more uh, magnified image which is really good for planetary work but not for deep sky work so I recommend that no matter what you do you start looking immediately for a 32 or 40 millimeter this is a Mead Super Plossel 40 millimeter it's a very good lens but there is also one let me see if I can find it here yes this is a, a, a Plossel made by SV Boney which is considerably uh, less expensive that is a 32 millimeter and in an inch and a quarter if I had to choose between the two I would choose the SV Boney it seems to me to be a little bit brighter to have really good contrast and and it's lower price now I will tell you that these are made in China and they use plastic molded plastic lenses a lot of people turn their nose up at that but frankly as long as those lenses are buried inside the lens and if you saw my first uh, part one you know that there are multiple lenses and all of the ones that they use plastic for are sealed in the interior it makes the eyepiece lighter and it makes the eyepiece much cheaper but the quality of the lenses I have found in the SV Bonis are are excellent now you can uh, there, there also is an SV Boney 
ultra wide. This, let's see what the, oh, okay, yeah, it's a 15 millimeter. That's a nice mid range. So 32 is a good uh, long focal length. Then I would go with something like either a 25 or a 23, and then maybe a 15. I wouldn't go much higher than a 15 unless you're looking at planets. And the reason is uh, anything beyond a 15 millimeter, in other words, smaller than a 15 millimeter, like this, this 10, this is a nice SV Boney 10 millimeter. Uh, by the way, they, they sell a set of these that I think is the, it consists of the four, the 10, and maybe the 23. I believe that's right. And they are called a spheric. They are an excellent set, this, this three IP set made by SV Boney. And they're not very expensive. I think, if I remember right, I paid under forty dollars for all for the for the set of three. Uh, this, as I say, is an ultra wide. That's kind of nice, but just this basic set of SV Boney eyepieces are what I would upgrade to, unless I were going to two inch eyepieces. In which case, what I would do is go with the Celestron for a two inch eyepiece set. Now, I'm primarily a deep sky observer. I don't do astrophotography. Well, I, I do, but it's, uh, it's klutzy. Uh, nothing I'd be willing to share on YouTube. But for visual observation, my first choice would be two inch eyepieces. This is a good set. It's a little expensive. I think I paid, well, close to 250 if I remember right, 235 or something like that for this set. I, by the way, I would avoid the Celestron inch and a quarter set. I haven't owned it, but I have looked at it in terms of the value you get. And I agree with a guy on YouTube that knows a lot more about this than I do. His name is Sliman. You might look at his channel sometime, who basically says, I would never recommend anybody get that set. Uh, it's, it's one of these things that it's more eye candy than it is. And by eye candy, I mean in the eye of the marketer, not eye candy in the eye of the astronomer. So in a subsequent video, I'm going to talk about these filters over here and why they are useful in visual astronomy. And, and for the rest of these videos, I don't know how many there will be, I'm going to focus entirely on suggestions for visual astronomy. I realize that a lot of people love to take uh, photographs and share them on YouTube and uh, all the other social media sites. It's wonderful. I love those. But the problem is a lot of people start out thinking that they're going to get Hubble quality uh, pictures from their setup. And I can tell you, you won't. You can get some pretty nice stuff, but it is very labor intensive to get the kind of beautiful color images that you sometimes see by some very, very good amateur uh, astrophotographers. I stick to visual. I, I putter in astrophotography mainly just to find out what is going on. But the uh, eyepieces that I tend to focus on, and like I say, I would start out with a small set like this S3 Boney as my first upgrade. If I could afford it, I'd go to the two inch over here. I realize I'm repeating myself, but sometimes people miss things when they watch the video. For those of you that pay careful attention, I'm sure I'm boring you to death, but I'm not an expert. I have been at this. I'm 75 years old and I've been at this since I was nine, but that does not mean that I know very much about it. It's a huge field and there are lots of people who know more about it than I do. At any rate, I have a lot of fun. I hope that you will too. I suggest you start near the bottom and uh, look for a good quality uh, eyepiece. Generally the ones that come with telescopes are not super quality, particularly the cheaper, uh, I'm sorry, 
uh, telescopes, uh, particularly now the eyepiece that came with this Celestron was pretty good. The eyepiece that came with this Mead was real good. It was a 26 millimeter, what they call super plossal. It was a, I think a five element plossal. Anyway, it was a, it was a pretty good eyepiece. But generally, unless you're spending close to $1,000 for your telescope, the eyepiece you get with it is not going to be as good as the telescope. So I would suggest you might want to upgrade. Well, that's enough for now. I hope that some of this will be useful to you. At some point, if there is some interest, I might do a little review of eyepieces. But I'm mainly making these videos for people who are maybe have gotten an interest in astronomy, maybe even gotten a telescope for Christmas, maybe attended a star party. But in any, at any rate, they're, they're just starting out and they would kind of like an overview of where to go and where to spend their money. My, re my recommendation is play around a little and as you'll find out in a subsequent video, start with binoculars. Don't start with an expensive telescope. But that's a story for another day and for today, I will let you go and tell you to stay tuned and have a nice day.